Hello guys, I hope you're all well. Please say hello in the comments as usual and I shall welcome you warmly. So welcome to this. I think this is our fifth uh, live stream now. So we're doing pretty well. The numbers were good last week. I can see we've got six already. So let's hope that builds a bit. Okay, so let's have a look at what we did last week. This week is going to be characters, image and sound. And we're going to do a bit of uh, looking back and seeing what you can remember. I've put in one that you will know from uh, from before. So let's have a look at the the rewind and think about the uh, amazing game of guess the question. I'll put this one up there. I think I've done this one once or twice. So uh, the answer was uh, more RAM and PC performance. Oh, I'll even set a stopwatch in a second. Um, speeds up access to data. Excessive use of virtual memory can cause disk thrashing. Decreases performance. Slower access uh, than RAM direct. Anyone tell me what this is all about? By the way, do say hello in the comments and I will introduce you. Any ideas what this one is all about? We did it two weeks ago, I think. Can anyone remember? More RAM and PC performance. Any ideas? This one is one of the easier ones. Oh, hello, Hash Brown Gaming. Let's get you up there. What happens when we use virtual memory? Yeah, that's pretty good. It's definitely in the right area. I'm going to actually push on and get through it. So we've got quite a lot to get through today. So yeah, it kind of is that. But instead, it's actually the question precisely was explain why it would be beneficial to get more RAM instead of relying on virtual memory. So that was pretty good. Hi, Hash Brown. I hope you are well. All right. So next up, uh, quiz time. Uh, we're going to rewind on that and have a little look at some of the questions which, well, one of them in particular, that you have defied. Uh, you have defied reason by never getting this one quite right. This one, the registers, the nastiest thing we've ever done, the hardest thing to remember. How can you get it right this time? So what is A, B, C and D? Which registers are they? I think last time it was two or three that people were getting right. Can we get this up to four? Because they do like to include this registers question in the in the final exam. They do like in these registers because it's it's hard to remember. So we've got stores the address of uh, stores address where data can be read. A bit of a clue in the title there. Stores data fetched from memory. Stores result of calculation or stores address of next instruction to be won. 11 people in, which is good. Any ideas? All a bit quiet on the comments front. I know it's a nasty question. Come on. Any ideas? What could this be? What about any of them? Can anyone guess any of these at all? What about store's result of calculation? Surely you guys can remember that one. This one always causes problems in the exam. People get them mixed up. There's nothing. It's all gone quiet. OK, we've got uh, A is MDR, C is accumulator, D is MDR. Let's see how you're doing. And well done for jumping in and uh, taking a risk. So indeed, you said A is MDR. A is the MAR. So it's that it, it's the address where the data will be read. B is the MDR. Uh, so you, you got them the wrong way around. Uh, C is the accumulator and D is the program counter. And the program counter, or the PC as they call it in the exam, stores the address of the next instruction to be run. OK, so a bit more work for everyone there to go away and learn those ones. OK, so that's what you need to do. These memory registers, they love that. because There's very little they can actually ask you on the whole CPU um, side of things. And these registers, they do absolutely love them. This one, easy peasy, I hope. And come on, not just Hash Brown answering all the questions. I can see there are, there are quite a few of you out there now. So what about uh, logical shift? We did logical shifts last time. Do you remember we did binary to deanery, deanery to binary, hex to everything, and we did binary shifts. Doing a logical shift left does what to a binary number? Uh, it's a 50-50. So what do we think? If you go left, are you dividing or are you multiplying? OK, we are closer up to 20 now. What do we think? Binary shifts. There's another impact of binary shifts, which if you can put in the comments, I'd be hugely grateful. But only Hash Brown appears to have his comments working today. You've all gone very quiet. 
Maybe you feel a bit rough like me. I've got some, I've, I've avoided a winter cold so far, but I feel I'm feeling it a bit today. Uh, oh, we've got, hello, Flynn. Hello, Conzo Bonzo. We've got B and we've got B. So is that what we're going for? Are we going for multiply? Should we see what the magic screen tells us? The answer is indeed multiply. So let's play you a totally pointless air horn to congratulate you. It is BBB. Hello, Jumbo Lizard A. Almost. <laughs> you had a 50-50. You blew it. Maybe next time. So that's the thing. Logical shift left is uh, is to multiply. OK, left is multiply. And I kind of understand why you get it the wrong way around, because you would think that right would. But it, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, that is that one. Uh, I think I've got a couple more of these from last week. What about this one? Now, if you look at this one analytically and take your time, you might figure this one out a bit earlier. Let's try to reset my timer. Not that I <laughs> ever look at it after setting it off. But anyway, doing a two bit left logical shift has what effect? A two bit. Are you going to fall into the trap? Oh, we've got Sergen who's gone for B. Was that for this question, Sergen? Um, so we've got 2244. So the question is, if you do, Hash Brown Gaming has gone for B, multiplies it by two. Sergen's gone for B. It was B for that one. OK. Um, man like Paul. Hello, how are you? Fabulous. Great picture. What a good looking guy. Jumbo Lit has gone for B. Shadow Blade. Hi, Shadow Blade's gone for B. Flynn's gone for B. OK. Ooh, man like Paul's gone for D. Interesting. And when I say interesting, what I really mean is Conzo Bonzo has gone for B. So when I say uh, D is interesting, what I'm actually trying to say is that D is, if my head wasn't in the way, <laughs> D is the right answer. Let me explain to you why. Oh, Firetron. Hello, Firetron. Good to see you. Hello, Aditya. Don't worry about, about being late. You can play back and watch my beautiful presentation anytime. I'll put it on after I finish doing this. Let's think about this logically, right? It, it's... I get the intuitive answer is saying that it's two because it's a two bit move. But think about bits. It goes two, four, eight, 16. So if you do two bits, it's going to be four because you go two, four, because it doubles each time, doesn't it? Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, one, two, eight, two, five, six, et cetera. Um, so it is D for this one. You are quite correct, Sergen. All right. So that is the, um, that's the binary shift. So just a couple of things to remember on that. But that is the binary shift, which I think brings us to today. What's it all about? How long have I had? I've had seven minutes. OK, we're in about the right place. I reckon I'm going to finish about five minutes early, maybe on time. We shall see. So we have done systems architecture. That was the first couple. We're now into memory and storage and we are getting towards the tail end of memory and storage. So this is these are the areas we've got to cover today. We've got characters, we've got images, and we've got sound. Now you'll realize as we go through this that actually, once you learn one, the rest are kind of similar. They do have different descriptive words for how they're stored and how they're measured and so on. But actually, you are often looking at the same sorts of ideas. And maybe that'll become more clear as we as we get through this. So we've got 1628. It's good. We've got a lot of people here now, so that's brilliant. Welcome to all of you. Please say hello in the comments and I will I will greet you warmly. So let's have a look at this one. We've got characters. So we're going to look at characters in a minute. And this is the idea of binary. This this notion of binary cuts across all of this. Everything on a computer is represented in binary. We know that the CPU, the processor, can only deal with machine code, and machine code is binary. And machine code consists of data and instructions. All right. So that's the only thing that processors deal with. So whatever a processor has to do, it's going to be in binary, whether it's images, whether it's characters or whether it's sound, it's got to be in binary. So in other words, every character is going to have a binary code. And for example, B will be one more than A and C will be one more than B. So that, that's how it works. They've all got a binary number associated with them. Then we're going to look at this idea of character sets. We're going to look at ASCII and Unicode. You can see at the bottom of that first sort of uh, highlighted area and then look at the number of characters that can be represented in ASCII and Unicode, because actually they've got they've got a different size allocations, different bits. OK, eight versus 32 bit. Do you know this idea of eight bit and doing the counting and going two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, one, two, eight, two, five, six. There's your eight bit number. You see eight, eight fingers. There we go. 
two, four, six, eight, and so on. So you can count it out and just think about your phone memory because that's exactly the same thing. So we'll look at images and look at um, color depth resolution. So within this unit, you need to be really clear on these definitions like color depth, resolution, sample rate, bit rate. That's the sort of technical stuff that you need to know here. But actually, when you go through it slowly, it's relatively straightforward. And in fact, you will know quite a lot of it from your experience of buying monitors or gaming or whatever else. So there's quite a lot of this you actually know. You might just just not know that you know it. OK, so the second part here is to show you what is and what isn't required. I'll say what isn't required. First of all, you don't need to go away and learn what A is in binary or B is in binary. Thankfully, they might they might show you the 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 ASCII character set and ask you to do something with it, but they will not expect you to know um, about the different you know, binary codes for characters. OK, so that's 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 gone. So what do you need to know about the number of characters is going to be limited by the bits available um, and the difference in the impact of each character set. And we'll look at different types of languages, like, for example, English, you've got A through Z, you've got zero through nine. You also want to rep represent the space bar the dash, the question mark, or the punctuation marks. So when you think about a character set, you need to consider how many different characters you need to include. And of course, a space, even though a space has nothing in it, it has to be represented by a character. No, let's, put it, let's get it right. The space won't, won't, you won't show up on the page, but actually it's still a character. It needs to be represented by a, a binary character, okay? And I'm guessing you're already good on this idea that pixels, that pictures are made up of images, sorry, are made up of pixels little little squares okay little squares of color the more squares of color you have the greater the resolution the greater the resolution the greater the file size so this relationship thing is something else that you'll need to develop a bit of a feel for as we go through this okay so let's jump into the five minute teach and get through this we're at 42 so we're about on track we'll look at characters first we'll look at the three in turn but we're going to start with characters Computers only work with binary bits. I think I've said that four times now. And, and this is something they will at some point test you next May or June. They will ask you about this. And of course, the characters on a keyboard are represented in binary. So let's now look at a character set. You've got two flavors, ASCII and Unicode. So ASCII is, uh, consists of eight bits. Now, if we count it up, eight bits, two, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8, 2, 5, 6. So 8 bits gives you 256 different characters that you can show because you've got 256 different binary numbers. I hope that makes sense because that's really quite important. So if you go for an 8-bit character set, you've got 256 characters that can be represented. All right. The difficulty is for English, that's OK because you've got the alphabet, you've got the numbers, you've got the various other sort of punctuation on the on, on the keyboard and stuff like that. But think about Chinese, think about Japanese, and suddenly the characters start to go through the roof and two, five, six characters won't hold all of the uh, characters required for all the languages. So this is where Unicode comes in. It's a 32-bit character set. So therefore, it can, be re it can represent over four million different characters. And it is four bytes per character, whereas ASCII is one byte per character. OK, so that's the uh, we've tried to pare this down. And thanks to Miss Silver again for her help with this material. We've tried to pare this down. So it's exactly what you need to know. But what is on that slide, you absolutely have to know and understand when you go into the exam. So that's the character side of things. Let's have a look at images now. Same thing, images represented in binary. We can assume that's the same for all of these now. And as I explained before, bitmap images, bitmap images are made up of dots called pixels, squares called pixels. Each pixel is represented by a binary number. Now, don't forget, the longer that binary number is that you represent that pixel uh, with, the more the range of colors you could possibly use. So you could use 256 colors, but you could use millions of colors if you wanted to. But it would make for a larger image file. All right, then we've got resolution. Resolution is the number of pixels per inch in an image. It's funny that they still use inches here. That's <laughs> never quite got rid of that. And also, if you're printing, you get DPI, which is dots per inch. 
So if you see, uh, if you really turn up the DPI on your printer when you print something, you can watch your 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 ink levels just going down like this because it, it, it uses a bubble jet printer just prints lots of little dots. If you get a magnifying glass out and look at it, I'm sure we don't even know what a magnifying glass is. But if you do, if you look at newsprint, you can see it's just lots of little dots. So here we go. The more bits, the higher the color depth, which means that you have the ability to show a greater variety of different colors or shades. Um, so that's 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 the relationship there. The more colors, the higher the quality of the image. All right. So that is the image part of this. And then the last bit we need to look at is, of course, oh, no, we've got metadata first. Metadata, they often include this. Metadata, meta, by the way, is Greek for above. I'll wiggle my hand up here so you understand what above means. So it's become a very popular word. People say it's a very meta conversation. And it's it, it's talking about things, about uh, a sort of overview of things. So metadata is is data that gives an overview of the file. So, for example, in a, uh, I don't know, in a in a word document, the metadata could be the type of file. It could be the um, the number of characters. It could be the file size. You've got a list of things there. In images, you've got color depth, image height, the type of camera it was taken with. Um, all all of these are types of metadata. And whether you take a photograph or whether you shoot a video, there will be metadata associated with it. Now. The metadata isn't just useful for you looking at and seeing, you know, what the image is made up of, but it's also used to actually display the image properly. OK, so so the 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 application will look at the metadata to make sure that it can actually display the image properly. So it's got sort of two functions there. Um, but also, I mean, I came across metadata when I was selling a camera because you can look at the metadata and see how many images the camera has taken, which if you're selling a DSLR is quite a big deal because each with shutters and you've got a certain shutter length, a certain number of actuations before you've got to uh, buy a new shutter and they're quite expensive. OK, and sound, our last one. So sound begins life in analog form. It's the analog wave, isn't it? Um, a pure and perfect sound. But then you want to record the sound digitally. When you record sound digitally, you can you can retain the same levels of quality with the sound. It doesn't diminish over time. I have many records, vinyl as you would call them. And the more times you play them, the quality of the vinyl actually decreases. And you hear this sort of crackling noise and the, um, the, the, the quality of the sound diminishes over time. With digital music, it doesn't do that. So analog sounds can be stored in digital form by taking samples. And it literally means you're taking recordings really quickly and you know, really rapidly and you're taking lots of recordings. So as the wave is going up and down, you're going record, 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 record. And so they're taken at regular intervals, and that's called sampling. Um, and if you listen to dance tracks, they've often got samples from other music that they will drop into a, in, in, into a dance track, for example. So three factors that influence um, the file size and quality. The sample rate. Notice how the sample rate is measured in hertz because it's the number of times something happens in a second. Can you remember the last time you came across Hertz was looking at the, the CPU and the speed of a CPU, how many fetch decode execute cycles it does per second was measured in Hertz. I mean, today's computers, it's uh, it, it, it's gigahertz, isn't it? Billions of cycles per second. Um, and, and I think we're up, we're up to trillions now. So the sample rate is the number of samples taken per second. It's measured in Hertz. Then you've got bit depth. The bit depth is the quality of each sample that's taken. And obviously, the more memory you allocate to each sample, the more accurately you can record it. Um, so if you have, a, I don't know, a, a, a greater bit, a bit depth, it will give you a, a sound with a greater fidelity, which sounds more like the real thing, like the analog thing. Um, so you've got bit depth and you've got sample rate. And can you remember going back to last week, the sort of multiplications that you need to do to actually come up with file sizes based on these. And then you've got duration based on these three, of course. And then you've got duration, which is the length of the sound. So that is sound. I've got 11 minutes left. OK, so we've covered quite a lot there, to put it mildly. But you need to make sure you go away and look at sample rate, bit rate, bit depth and, and resolution. And these key phrases, I just recommend doing some flashcards and testing yourself so that you actually know what they mean. 
um, and relate it to relate it to images that you've got. Have a look at the metadata so it actually makes sense to you rather than just being words on a page. Because you kind of know this stuff because every time that you take, put a movie on your phone or you add a new app to your phone or you're putting games onto your Xbox or your PlayStation, you're having to juggle with your, the size of your hard drive compared to the size of the games. So it's 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 something that you're already aware of. All right, so that was sound. What we'll do now is go into quiz time and see if uh, see if we can get some of these right. I think these are quite easy. To be perfectly honest. So let's pop this one up there. Dead easy. And uh, I want to see lots of answers here. Uh, yep, yeah, still got a good few people here. So what unit is sample rate measured in? Does anyone know? Aditya has come straight in with an A and I'm going to immediately play a random sound, a bit like that, and we'll say yes, because it is a man like Paul, a good man. Aditya has said A, man like Paul has said A. This is all absolutely spot on. We've got Sergan with A, we've got Hash Brown with A, we've got Flint with A, we've got Firetron with A. I like your, I like your avatar. We've got Shadow Blades with A, welcome Shadow Blades, we've got Jumbo Lizard with A. You are all absolutely spot on. So that is exactly what it is, Hertz, okay? Same as measuring the speed of a CPU. All right, so that is Hertz, outstanding. Let's try this next one. I think this is also quite easy. Question two. Uh, which of the following is not true if you increase the sample rate? You've got to work the question through. Which of the following is not true if you increase the sample rate? Do you remember that the sample rate was how often you are taking a recording, the, the, how, how often you're taking a recording of the sound, okay? So we've got, which following is not true if you increase the sample rate, Hash Brown Gaming has come in straight away there with B. We've got Jumbo Lizard with B. We've got Chandler with B. We've got Fire Drum with B. We've got Concept Monster with B. We've got Ditty with B. We've got Hi Serena. You've got all of you and Sergan as well with B. You are all absolutely spot on. The answer is B. And that's because obviously if you increase the sample rate, it's going to get bigger. It's going to get larger. All right. So that's outstanding. Where are we now? We've got eight minutes left. I reckon I'm going to finish five minutes. So, hi, Ria. How are you? Nice to see you. Well, not nice to see you. Nice. Well, I'm welcoming you. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. And we've got Flynn as well. Good. Good numbers. And you are all switched on. That is outstanding. Oh, here we go. I've clicked on the next one. What is meant by bit depth? I tried to explain this to students talking about buckets of paint, and I think I was the only person who knew what I was talking about. So uh, I'm going to leave that analogy for another lifetime. What's meant by bit depth? Uh, ooh, we've got we've got Aditya coming in with C. We've got Firetron coming in with C. <laughs> I do like that avatar. Um, we've got Jumbo Lizard who's coming in with C as well. There he is. Hashbound Gaming C. Okay, so I think... The number of bits used to store each sound. Brilliant. Do you know what? It would be useful for you. And of course, you are absolutely spot on. Let me get my head out of the way. Oh, or in the way. Out of the way. There we go. That idea of 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6, 5, 16. That, having that there when you're counting out your bits, 2, 4, 8, 16, is really helpful. And it just means you won't make a silly mistake when you're doing these calculations or when you're thinking about it, okay? And also when you're doing that um, question on binary shifts about moving two bits to the left or right. OK, seven minutes. I think I can do this easily. Ooh, OK, how many characters does ASCII include? How many characters? Four million. Mm, it's a lot there. Or ten. Bit of a random answer. What do we think? So I've got quite a few A's coming in here. Ah, oh, crumbs, I can't keep up. We've got Aditya with A. We've got Jumbo Lizard with A. We've got Serena with A. Serena's still basking in the glory of winning the um, the the word search competition today, which was outstanding. I don't know how you found them, because I couldn't find them, and I wrote the blinking word search. And we've got Rhea with A. That was outstanding. Yes, you are all absolutely spot on. That's exactly what it is. It is A, 256. OK, so make sure you know... Um, how many characters ASCII and Unicode can represent. And the fact that Unicode, because it can represent more characters, means that you can represent different languages that have got way more characters than us. I, I If I was a better person, I'd have 
got to Google to find out how many characters there are in the Chinese language, but, but there are loads because they've got different registers. So if anyone's got an idle second to Google the answer to that, let us know. It's lots, uh, but I can't remember how many. And we had Firetron A as well. Look at that. We had Flynn with A. We had Firetron with A. We had Aditya with A. All good, all good, all good. Um, oh, that was the one that I've just put up. Meant by the colour depth of uh, an image. And you're absolutely spot on. That is, of course, the answer. Number of bits in each pixel. So this is good. You guys are giving the impression that you understand these different definitions and what they mean. Um, and so on. So that is very, very good. Uh, I think that could be the end of my quiz. I've got one more. ASCII uses one byte per character. Unicode uses how many bytes per character? Oh, so we've got, now I think that Aditya was the first response to that because I think Sergan's answer, I think that was for a previous answer, wasn't it, Sergan? So I think this was Aditya saying B. I think Hash Brown Gaming has said B. Yes, I thought so, Sergan. Um, we've got Shadow Blades with B. Uh, you're all... Absolutely spot on. It's four bytes per character. So that's really, really good. OK, four bytes per character. Um, and that's your Unicode. And that's but so because you've got more space, for want of a better word, it means that you you can you can use more characters. OK, Shadow Blades with B. Did I give you your glory? There you go. Man like Paul with B. Good man. He's putting a bit of a pained expression there. Um, let's have a look. So that's good. Uh, I think we are coming to the end. No, I've got I've got another one. Um, which one is not an example of image metadata? Now, this is quite sneaky of me because these could all be metadata, but one of them is not an example of image metadata. Ooh, Aditya has come in. Flynn, was this? Oh, I should be remembering. I think Aditya, Aditya said C for this, that camera model isn't an example. Shadow Blades has said the same thing. We've got Jumbo Lizard who said the same thing. Ooh, we've got Flynn who said A. And when I say, ooh, I mean, that's the right answer. <laughs> and we've got Firetron, good man, who came in with A as well. So that was a sneaky one on my part because sample rate would be, we've got Hash Brown with A, look at that. Good man. Um, we've got Sergan, I can't keep up now with A. Uh, yes, because sample rate would be an example of audio metadata, but not image metadata because an image isn't recorded a certain number of times a second it's an image so it doesn't it doesn't have that so that is a tricky one and I fooled some of you but not all of you by any means so it is that one okay revision ideas I'm going to finish on time if not a few seconds early so really um this is quite a technical um quite a technical block this unit however get these conversions sorted out the ones from last week we looked at with multiplying various different things together to calculate file size for sound, images and text. Make sure you're happy with those. They could be sneaky and include data that you don't need, uh, which I think is their way of turning it into a seven, eight or nine question. They haven't done it yet, but that's uh, a possibility, something that they could do. Uh, I've got six likes and one and, and one dislike. I, I shall hunt that person down. Um, so have a go with those. And now that you've got those slides telling you about um, how it's calculated, that should be OK. And practice different conversions each time. Don't do the same one over and over again. Mix it up and do one of each so that you actually know them rather than just learning in a block. because that's, that's no good to anyone. Two minutes. Confident of ASCII versus Unicode. Make sure you know the numbers. Make sure you know the difference. Make sure you can explain the benefits of because ASCII is obviously smaller, which is beneficial. Unicode is larger, which is less beneficial, but Unicode can represent more characters, which is beneficial. So good and bad. And be confident on these definitions with bit depth, sample rate, color depth, resolution, and so on. Resolution being uh, pixels per inch. OK, and then again, <laughs> next week, please, when I put up the thing on uh, the registers, please someone get it right. Because uh, I've got a feeling that you were worse at that question this week than you were last time, which is worrying. Because that's not what's supposed to happen. That's not what I get paid to do. So this is next week's challenge. It's the need for compression. I think it'll be a 20 minute episode next week. It should be nice and easy. So lossy versus lossless compression. But there's actually quite a lot within that. So I reckon it'll be a slightly shorter one. But uh, I reckon about 20 minutes. So there we are, guys. I hope that is all really useful for you. 
It is 18.58. I promised to finish early and I have done as I promised. So have a lovely week. I hope you all uh, don't get frozen to death tomorrow. And I will see you all bright and early tomorrow. And I'll see you next week at exactly the same time. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.